So, we're back. Um, Welcome to From Salem with Love. My name's Jacob Anaya. I had to remember my last name again. Um, I am Fiber Dreams by Jacob on Instagram and TikTok. Um, and we're super excited to be with you all today. I'm Anna Campos. I'm at Circle Stitches on Instagram and Circle of Stitches with underscores on TikTok. And we took a unexpected long break, but we're back. We are. Yeah. It was a good break. Yeah. Not for me. Mm. So I got COVID, <laughs> and uh, no, that sucked. <laughs> no. So between Jacob's finals and me getting COVID, it's been a little impossible to to record. And I have to say, if you've not gotten COVID yet, do not recommend at all. Uh, it was really kind of a bummer after being careful for you know two and a half years to get it but yeah. it's not fun it's really not um all the bones in my face hurt a lot it was awful wow yeah and uh i have like 50 percent of my taste and smell back Ugh. that was but, probably the worst part of but the whole thing. you know anyway but we're back we're here we're queer <laughs> yeah I, listen my brain's not fully back yet either so we, we went there it's okay <laughs> Anyway, so clearly we've forgotten how to act in front of a camera. Not that I think we ever really knew, but like... We we just kind of wing it. We do our own thing. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's finally a little warm out, at least for today. You know, who Mm -hmm. knows? It might snow. Who (laughs) knows? Who knows? Um, But today I am wearing my Vasa top. I knit this several years ago. It's one of my favorite um, pieces for like warm weather and summer. It's just super basic little tee. And what this is, is knit in the Barocco Remix Light, which is a really good basic yarn. And one of the things that I really love about this yarn is that it is 100% recycled fibers, so it's super eco-friendly. Uh, it's a blend of nylon, cotton, acrylic, silk, and linen. And it's always got this sort of tweedy look to it, which actually, you know, let's do the awkward thing. You can even see that, you know, the black and light pink that I used are also tweedy. Um, but it's really good for warmer weather. It doesn't have any wool and linen is my favorite fiber for summer because it is the only fiber that stays cool to the touch always. So that's why we love linen. So that's what I'm wearing today. And I'm wearing my new shift cowl, um, that I finished, I think a couple, maybe last month, but I love it. Got to redo one because I had done Jeremy's, and this one I actually had swatched and done the correct way. And it's so, so pretty. I love, like, the purple up here. Yeah. What colors did you use? So, um, I used Shades of Earth, um, I think the Family Jewels, and then Salty Dog. Yes, that looks right. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's beautiful. Yay. I love it. Yeah. So I have a new pattern to share. This was actually released um, a few days ago for a local yarn store day. And it's my herbalist's hat. And um, cats and knitting had a bit of a whoopsie woo. So it's back on the... <laughs> it's, whoopsie woo? Is that a... I don't know what that is. Um, so it's back on the, the needles that's just at the top for right now. But here's this design. I actually started this design, I'm embarrassed to say, like a year ago. Um, but then I had like a serious case of like imposter syndrome and I put it in a corner and I was sad about it. And then I was like, you know what, I get over it. So I think it's pretty cute. This is also using shades of earth and some of my hand dyed yarn, but it's super cute. And, um, what I did is I created a bunch of kits for it to help, you know, folks pick colors. Um, and they are in all sorts of different colors. And what I did is I used O-Wool, uh, O-Wool O-Wash fingering. Uh, paired with spin cycle and o wool is a wool that's certified organic it's made in the u.s it's a woman-owned and woman-run company so with spin cycle you know woman-owned woman-operated u.s based so i really love them and as you can see uh, you know this is kind of a bold combination this is bee balm and rosy maple so we have a bunch of these kits pre-packed on the website um, and i tried to do sort of different color combinations for all sorts of different yeah, so this colorway here, this is Valley Girl. This is actually a brand new spin cycle colorway that just landed in the shop. Look how pretty. pretty. I'm seeing your face. You're like, mm-hmm. I know. I'm looking at it like, um. <laughs> you're like, I don't know. I'm going to get my hands on that. Yeah, I'm so 
you know, you can see I did lots of different color palettes. And this one's fun. Um, this is also a new color called Every Rose, which is super cute. So we have a bunch of these cheap packs. And one thing that I'm going to work on um, after we finish here is that we finally got more Shades of Earth. This is super gorgeous, which is the original color that I used here. So there will be some new kits coming. But that's what I'm currently super excited about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what pattern did you want to share with us today? Which one did I want first? Um, the Billy. I think I'm doing the Billy um, pullover first. And mm -hmm. what was the name of the designer for that? Sorry, Nordland. Um, oh, I love her patterns. Yeah. So I've been like looking at this pattern. I actually like I screenshotted it on Instagram so that I remembered it. Because with me, if I don't screenshot it. I do that too. I don't remember the pattern. And then I have all these screenshots of patterns in my phone. All right. I know that we forgot on how to do this, but let's put in a photo. Right there. Um, yeah, so I really, really love this pattern. I'm waiting a little bit to start it, um, just because I, one, I'm trying to write up the pattern that I designed. I'm trying to do a couple of gifts and all that other stuff, so I wanted to wait a little bit. But this is um, a pattern in Worsted Weight. Um, it has a whole bunch of fun, like, cables and seed stitch and, um... Yeah, it's just a really fun looking pattern. Um, I think it would be challenging. And for me, when I pick a project, I do things that I'm not comfortable with because I want to build all of my skills. Um, the other part that was interesting when I was looking at this pattern, um, we'll go back to the gauge swatch type of argument that we have sometimes, but this particular <laughs> one has a gauge swatch that you have to do it in seed stitch. So something that I kind of wanted to point out that if you're looking at this and you're kind of like a medium experience level or a beginner level when you look at the patterns make sure that you're not just like looking at the gauge swatch thing um and just thinking that it's always stockinette look at what it actually says for mm -hmm. what they want that pattern knit in because otherwise you're going to end up with something that's not going to fit you yeah um well speaking of um you know make sure even if it says stockinette make sure it's in the round versus flat because that makes a difference but it's actually really important that you mention that especially for the shift cowl because that involves swatching uh, sometimes designers don't give you the, the, the swatch stitch to match the pattern. And so I actually have another one of these on the needles right now too, that I'm not showing today. You'll see next time. Um, but I swatched in stockinette and I got gauge. And then when I switched to the mosaic stitch for the pattern, um, my stitches were way too tight. And so when I finished this one section of the cowl, I measured it to compare the schematic and it was completely off. And so just be aware that if you are asked to swatch in stockinette for a pattern that is not knit in stockinette, you might have to do, still do some adjustment afterwards. So I actually had to rip my cowl out and go back because uh, it would actually be more useful for this pattern to have the, the gauge be in the slip stitch rather than stockinette. But, yeah. Sorry. And with this one too, it was interesting because when I was looking at it again, because I, we both made the pattern now, I think we're both at like two or three times each. Um, mm -hmm. When I was looking at the swatch for this one, sorry, we went off track. We will do colors for the Billy Pullover in a minute. But um, when I was doing it, this one is one of the only ones that I read the swatch and it said to actually not block it prior, just do the swatch without blocking. Mm -hmm. So that does add a difference as well for um, your overall gauge at the end of it. Um, I have to say, as a designer, I always try and include unblocked and blocked gauge because in blocking, you can stretch the fabric so oh, yeah. much or not that, you know, I think it's more valuable to have both informations on there but every time i say stuff like this i'm like am i like pissing people off <laughs> probably but you know what <laughs> we don't care yeah, I guess we just do our own thing so let's get to colors that i picked for this sweater because <clears throat> we went way off topic but yes oh well so, billy pullover we so you said it's in a worsted weight it right? is in a worsted weight and then also there's some other things that i wanted to show you because i picked two different brands of worsted weight and you're gonna see shortly that they're very different, and it's another reason why you would want a gauge swatch for this. Mm -hmm. So the first ones that I did, um, well, the first one I'm going to do is it's just like an ivory from Malabrigo. Um, and that's the Rios. It's the Rios. It's a very, like, the original pattern is, like, in this grayish white color, so I wanted to do that one that was similar to that so that you all could see that. I'm going to hold that one up. But the other thing that I wanted to show, because I thought that it would be really kind of okay. cute, if 
it was also maybe in this color. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's Harrisville Watershed. And it's um, the Monarch color. But as I was saying before, if you look at... I'm going to put both mm -hmm. of these really close up to the thing. If you look at it, like, maybe it doesn't seem so much right up to the camera, but there's a very different, definite difference of, like, thickness of the fiber in this one versus this one. So that's why also gauge swatching with different yeah. things that well, are even though, worsted. Yeah, because even though they're worsted, this is a superwash merino. It's a very smooth yarn. It's a worsted spun meaning it's a tighter twist. And if you compare, like, look at the twist on those two, right? You can see the difference in the twist. This one's a woolen spun, so it's much fluffier, and it's rustic. Mm -hmm. And this yarn has a lot of grip, so this one's going to grow more than this one. So even though they're both worsted, you do have to sort of be familiar with the difference in the fibers. Yeah. yeah. Which is good. We always take these opportunities yeah. to kind of get a also, little bit of education. Cause look how pretty and tweedy. <laughs> Sorry, but... Um, when you do these projects, like, you spend a lot of time on them. Mm -hmm. You want to do the prep work so that when you finish it, you don't end up, like, with this ginormous thing that's just, like, draping on your body. You did the prep work, and now it fits you the way that you wanted it to fit you versus the way that it just kind of ended up. I mean, what I always say is you're swatching one way or not because either you're swatching ahead of time or your project is a swatch because when it doesn't end up fitting, you have to redo it. So mm -hmm. the swatch is happening no matter what. <laughs> All right, so the other color, because I've been obsessed with this color, mm -hmm. I just want to bring it out, um, the Solus. And so for me, normally, when I suggest colors for, like, cable work and, like, certain stitches, I normally stay away from variegated because I feel like it gets distracting, but I think this one could work for it. Oh, it definitely it's just works. so pretty. Because it's super low contrast. So actually, yeah. that's the thing that comes up a lot. I like to do cables and stitch patterns in variegated, and what you need to be aware of is whether or not it's super high contrast. And if it's low contrast, it's not going to obscure the mm. stitches. If it's high contrast, it's will. And so here's a tip that I have for that. If you take your phone, your camera phone, and set it to monochrome and look at the yarn through the phone, if it kind of looks all like the same tone, then it'll show cables and stitches really well. If you see a lot of high, uh, like high contrast, like dark and light, then it's probably going to obscure the stitch pattern and it's better for something plain. Yeah. I never knew that, actually. Oh. See? You learn something new every day. <laughs> All right, and my last color for this... Um, of course. ...was Eastview. And I, I'm just a sucker for fall colors. It's mm -hmm. just really me. Um, yeah, but and look the at the beautiful colors. tweeds. Like, but it's got little it. specks of, like, teal and green. I don't know. I don't know why that's happening. I blame man down, <laughs> and I get bumped the Skiing camera too. Oh well, I blame I blame COVID. My brain like my brain wasn't great beforehand, but now it's like extra. Not. I don't know what I can blame. My brain was just like this. <laughs> I mean, you had COVID too, just longer ago. Yeah. Oh no. Who and knows? Somehow I somehow Jeremy got it, and I never got it, and was living in the same house at the second time that he got it. So. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Anyway. Your pattern. So next, I um, guys, Tessa knit me a shawl. So this so gorgeousness pretty. is the Dustlin shawl from Stephen West, which we mentioned. I think we mentioned it on an earlier episode, but then Tessa knit one for me. How pretty is this? It's so good. And this is this, amazing. With this Frank Ochre, it's like right. Of course, oh. this is knit in Malabrigo Rios in Frank Ochre, which we are absolutely obsessed with. And as you can see, it's a huge shawl. It's yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so, um, you sh you can knit it in four skeins of Rios. She, um, is about to go take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, God. I'm sure people are so happy to have us back. Obviously, we're doing I mean, great. Um, but seriously, this thing is amazing. Be. And, um... It's in four skeins of Rios, and obviously Frank Ochre is a great color to show it off. Well, see, this is what I was saying. Frank Ochre is, uh, you know, it's kettle dyed, it's hand dyed, but it's low contrast. So even though you have variation um, in the tones, like the stitches show up beautifully. And just the light's <laughs> heading it, it almost looks golden. Yeah. And it's like... Oh. Right, and so this is a yarn that is not completely solid, but it's going to show off the stitches just fine because it's low contrast. <laughs> Okay. Um, and Tessa, now I have to make it in that color, exactly. Of course. But I also picked some other colors of the Malabrigos that are low contrast that would be really good. So this is Sunset. I'll have a little orange moment. 
This color is called Aquamarine. It's really pretty. It's got like periwinkle and blue. Very, very pretty. This is Lettuce. And then this one here is Hollyhock. All right, so you can see in the skein, all of these are a little tonal, but they're gonna show off the stitches really well. <coughs> Excuse me. Not COVID, I'm just really thirsty. I'm gonna get water today. This is Fresco y Seco. And this one is Fuchsia. Oh no, it's coming apart. Oops. <laughs> it's gorgeous. <laughs> when I wear it as a necklace for the rest of the episode. <coughs> I'm gonna get some water. Go get water. I can introduce my next pattern while you get water. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. Oops. Okay. So, my next pattern, let me get my little cheat sheet notes for everything. Um, it's Destination Unknown um, by Cheryl Bra Bost. I don't know why I just called her Brost. Um, so, this one is another pattern that you can use with spin cycle. I think you could potentially use it without spin cycle because that um, lovely color change that spin cycle does with it isn't necessary um, for the pattern to come out looking amazing. Um, so it is with um, kind of along the lines of like this with the um, mosaic stitch. Um, so it is a giant shawl and I'm going to put a picture right here as Lana goes to sit down. Um, and so it just is like a beautiful mosaic pattern that goes down. I've been obsessed with it since I saw it and I don't know why it's taking me so long to bring it up, but here it is. <laughs> um, so I did a couple different color combinations mm -hmm. with the newer, um, colorways from Spin Cycle, just so you guys can all see them because they're pretty. They are pretty. Um, so... This one is absolute zero. It's a I purple color. And so the original oh, pattern so um, there, the lighter color was your backdrop where you were mosaics. Um, your mosaic little peep through their little blips mm -hmm. were the lighter color. But I decided that why not try doing it the opposite way and have your little blips be a darker color and your main color be like a lighter color. So oh, I yeah. thought that that would be kind of pretty together. Mm-hmm. And this is Polar Morn, an okay. Alabrigo sock. Good thing she's here, because I wouldn't be telling you any colors. <laughs> um, all right. And then, so, obviously, because it's me, and I love a little bam in your face moment. Um, <laughs> all right. So this one is Sugar High. And then the lettuce color. So pretty together. Gorgeous. And I would put this one as your back and this one as your main color there. Okay. And then my last one is I'm just gonna dance with the yarn for a moment. That's um, fair. End of summer, which we're just gonna put that, I'm gonna cross it out and put beginning of summer. Oh, by um, the way, this colorway um, is discontinued. We do still have some, so if you want it, get it before it's gone. Okay, and then I did this one from Wolf Oak. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. the Tinned. It's their Merino fingering weight. Yeah, and this would be so drapey. Yeah, so that's a thing to notice too in skeins. Like, you can literally sort of tell the drape of something, right, because like, Look at how differently like these skeins drape, right? So you can tell that this is gonna be a really soft fabric. Yeah. But um, one thing about the Wolf Folk, which drives me a little bananas, I will admit, is that their colors don't have names, they just have numbers. So this is color number five. And I have one last one. Um, just because I was like, why not try different ones together? So these two together, this one is Every Rose, like you had shown earlier. Yeah, it's one of the new ones. This is really pretty, look at that. Such a pretty skein. Mm -hmm. And then this one is the Brooklyn Tweed Loft, and it is in what color? Almanac. Almanac. So it will be pretty. You might, um, there's like a darker blue and like brown section in that skein mm -hmm. um, where that part might get a little bit lost in your loops. But yeah, that's okay. Because even if happens. you look here, right, th like there's some sections here that are lower contrast, but they're still pretty. Yeah. 
So it used to, when I was knitting things, it used to be like, oh crap, no one's going to be able to see it. But now I actually have grown to love it. I like a low contrast yeah. color work. Yeah. Love it. It's a good skein. Yeah. Nice. Yay. And so the other thing that I wanted to share today. Wait, turn back on camera. So we just got this box of goodies. And these are from Wildflower & Co. And what they are is they, they're based out of New York State. How oh, cute. Thank you for the order. Mm -hmm. um, how pretty their card is. And it says, we are the lovers, dreamers, and magic makers. With wild hearts and wilder dreams, we follow our own paths and bloom. Individually, we are all wildflowers together. Well, oh, together we are Wildflower Co. Anyway, it's very pretty. And so, the first one that I want to show off, and this is extremely important right now given what is going on with Roe v. Wade. Look, we're not going to pretend that's not happening. You know, abortion rights are human rights. Anyway, so here is our feminist AF pin. It's very gorgeous mm -hmm. crest. And so it has a Venus symbol, a tiger, a rose, and cherries. So there's a lot of symbolism here, and that's super cute. You have this gorgeous lotus flower. Oh, how cute. So pretty. Yeah. This very adorable lunar moth with the moon phases. Be like, oh, oh. <clears throat> and then here's a couple more. We have a serpent and a moon, both with really beautiful botanical details. And because we are millennials and everything that we did as teenagers is now cool again, mm -hmm. you know, jackets are a thing again, we got iron on patches. All right, so we have a few different designs. Let me so cute with like a little jean jacket. Well, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I need to go buy a jean jacket. Let's do it. So, check out these gorgeous iron-on patches. So next episode, we might have jean jackets with fabulous patches on top of them. Why does one buy a jean jacket these days? I think everywhere at this point. I don't know. I have my like brownish colored one. Mm. All right, well, I guess we're going to go hunting for some jean jackets, apparently. And get juice. Oh, shoes? Okay. We're going to the juice place after. Oh, juice. I thought you said shoes. Shoes, no. <laughs> yeah. anyway. I do have a cute pair of moon and sun ones that are heels that I haven't worn yet. Say what? Yeah. I got them at die, die With Your Boots On. And you didn't show me? I sent you pictures, but it was, like, before when I was saying, uh, like, oh, I want these for my wedding shoes. And then, um... It got vetoed, but whatever. Hmm. I still have to. I have to I get a whole matching outfit. I don't remember anything that happened before I had COVID. Like my memory is just okay. gone. I also don't remember anything more than like three days ago. I don't I'm remember sorry. anything from last week. By the way, if you sent me an email and I never responded, email me again because my brain's not working. Insane. Anyway, and that's what we wanted to share today. We're happy to be back yeah. and uh, let us know what you're up to, what you're knitting and what you'd like to hear about. Um, I'm actually gonna be announcing a summer knit along soon and some gorgeous and Zula yarn. So I haven't mentioned this anywhere yet, so here you're getting a little bit of an exclusive preview. I'm actually having Anzula um, custom dye a colorway for us on their linen blend base for a summer top knit along. So stay tuned, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Okay, so now I have something to look forward to. Yeah, so yeah. All right, bye everyone. Bye. And just kind of breathe it out. You 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 breathe it out. I'd be upset because the nope. line's not going to be upset. The line is straight now. Oh, we already started playing. you got to warn me before we Why? start Why? Because then I can just cut out the crazy stuff. Oh, man. <laughs>